Not everyone on Long Island knows where their drinking water comes from. There's some genuine confusion out there. Um, no, I do not know exactly where my drinking water comes from. I have no idea where my drinking water comes from. I'd imagine some, kind of, uh, some type of refinery. I would say the drinking water comes from the springs. Reservoir? No idea. Where? Sewer train, I guessed. <laughs> I don't really know. I, I guess that would be it. Sewer train and they would clean it from there. I'd never even thought about that before. Uh, I don't know, uh, the, what are those, the Finger Lakes, Great Lakes upstate, I don't know. Uh, I, I technically get mine from my faucet, usually. You know, bathtub, maybe. I don't know, I really don't, I don't know. The beauty of Long Island is that we are an island. The challenge of Long Island is we are an island. 100% of our drinking water comes from directly underneath our feet. It's called a sole source aquifer, which means it's our only source of drinking water. The main source of water to our aquifer and our drinking water is rainfall. And that is so it rains and the rainfall hits the land and then trickles down into the aquifer. And therefore anything that's on top of the land or under the land, like a septic tank or a cesspool, is going to affect the quality of that water as it seeps through the aquifer. We are seeing an alarming increase uh, in, in many things that shouldn't be in our drinking water. That's a concern, obviously. And we're going to need to work with everyone to try and change the direction that things are headed in. The greater the population, the more activity there is on the land surface, the more contaminants and pollutants that enter into that aquifer system. From your household hazardous waste, your pharmaceutical drugs, pesticides, nitrates, fertilizers, you name it. One of the things I'm most concerned about in Long Island's drinking water is nitrogen, and specifically high levels of nitrogen. Uh, in some cases, they're so high it can be a human health concern. In other cases, the high levels of nitrogen can begin to impact coastal ecosystems. The issues that we have here are development or overdevelopment, uh, lack of sewers, uh, and through most of Suffolk County, certainly, uh, as well as laws that would help to, and enforcement that would help to better control use of fertilizers and pesticides that contribute to the problem. Open space is extremely important to Long Island's water supply because it helps to filter precipitation as it makes its way into the aquifer system. Open space includes forests, grasslands, and wetlands, also floodplain areas, recreational spaces, and farmland. One of the greatest challenges actually is in Nassau County. Since Nassau County is 80% developed, which means 80% of the land has been paved over. The rainwater doesn't seep through a parking garage, it doesn't seep through a condo complex, and it doesn't seep through asphalt. A stormwater runoff picks up contaminants on the roadways and other impervious surfaces and finds its way into storm drains, creeks, rivers, streams, and ultimately into our bays and harbors. This illustrates how the quality of groundwater and surface waters are closely linked and therefore need to be managed as an interconnected system. Here is Long Island's most important asset, critical asset that we need to grow and sustain ourselves for now and in the future. And yet, there isn't an entity that's in charge of protecting it, maintaining it, sustaining it. That is a big gap in our process, one we need to fix and one we need to fill. The general public, you know, the three million people on Long Island uh, have the most significant role to play in protecting Long Island's water supply. From something as simple as not uh, flushing away our prescription medications down the drain, but using the collection programs that are being established. Also being very careful about any household hazardous waste and how we dispose of that. Using uh, appliances that help to conserve water and being very careful about watering the lawns. And not that we can't do any of these things, but we have to be a little more careful about uh, how we go about some of our everyday activities that affect our water supply. Recycling more is very helpful. Maintaining cesspools and septic tanks is very important. We need the public to use more green cleaning materials, to be very restrictive of their use of pesticides. We're very, very hopeful the public will engage in new public behaviors that will protect the water source. 
Well, on Long Island, economic growth and clean drinking water go hand in hand. You really can't have one without the other. The economy on Long Island cannot grow without a clean drinking water supply. Economic growth does not need to be contingent upon building on land, and that's been the old model for economic growth in Long Island. But, uh, you know, we've got major universities here in Long Island, major technology firms, and I think going forward, relying more on technology and innovation for economic growth uh, would help us. As important as clean water is to economic health, it's even more important to human health, to the health of current and future generations. Clean water is not a luxury. It should be a priority to every Long Islander. You know, unlike other places around the state that can get their drinking water from lakes or rivers or other water bodies, we have no plan B once our drinking water is gone. So we need to be real good stewards and, and real good observers of what is happening and understand that it's up to us to make sure that this resource is available for the future.